to the uh, webinar jointly organized by Fikki and Thinklin on the topic Learning Beyond Classroom, a Virtual Experience. Since India has been through more than three months of lockdown and the globe too is dealing under the uh, COVID-19 pandemic for last six months or so, and actually has brought the entire economy, the entire society to a standstill. Uh, it has left all of us pretty bewildered and, uh, uh, and has shown us what disruption can do to this world and to our lives. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has not only uh, brought the industry to the standstill, but also has left more than 1.3 billion students, both in the school as well as in higher education, out of uh, the schools and uh, colleges. And, and that has actually accelerated the education uh, sector to move into online learning. Uh, FIKI school and higher education uh, committees have done in the last three months, more than 15 to 20 webinars, actually in an effort to educate educators on digital learning, because that's the only mode of learning that is happening today. Uh, and and uh, the effort is to make educators aware of the various technologies that are available on online digital learning space. Uh, and how to, because, because the physical classroom and digital classrooms are a different mode of transmission of education. So, you know, the, the methodology for classroom planning, the pedagogy that is going to be used, uh, the tools for assessments and evaluations. These are something that are being, you know, disseminated by our experts from the top uh, universities and schools from India and across the globe. If you look at the online education in India, it is expected to reach out to almost about 9.5 million learners uh, by 2021. This was a projection. And perhaps this number is going to go uh, accelerating much higher than this, uh, which was only about 1.9 million users uh, in 2017-18. The online market is also going to grow at 8x uh, you know, uh, growth rate in the next five years, uh, as our, uh, you know, 50% of our uh, population are uh, inter internet users, and actually more than 50% uh, people. Uh, what the post COVID scenario or the, you know, the uh, is going to look like, or as we are calling it as the new normal, uh, will have hybrid uh, you know, education models uh, because of the social distancing, hygiene, and uh, you know, uh, and the guidelines that are going to be, you know, are going to be projected by the various governments to maintain the infection rate of COVID low because this infection uh, virus is going to be with us for some time now. That is going to actually make us look at different models of education delivery and the hybrid model seems to be the most plausible one in the current scenario um, there are uh, however when you talk we talk about blended uh, you know education models uh, what everybody fears or uh, or shows concern is that the new generation uh, of learners will miss out on the you know the real time physical experience that can be provided to the students from uh, you know contact programs or from exactly from a physical brick and mortar school however new technologies like the ar vr xr are being explored by the edtech companies uh, to supplement this conventional online uh, education models Application of virtual reality in providing a collection of videos in 360 degree format is allowing the user to have an immersive learning experience and prevent students from getting bored and distracted easily. Uh, a conventional online classroom can be a little tedious and 
holding uh, a child's uh, attention span can be a challenge for the uh, teacher also the visual learning material and virtual tours empower students to work on projects and assignments using text voice photo and video i would like to thank our partners thinkling which is a finland based organization for offering visual learning solution for education remote training and skills and development uh, we have a panel of uh, you know uh, experienced uh, technocrats and educators who are going to take you through this very exciting and uh, you know uh, educating uh, uh, topic of how uh virtual reality and augmented reality can really transform uh the education experience thinklink is also a winner of the unesco ict in education prize in an increasingly digitized world thinklink helps to build curriculums to develop uh, the 21st century skills and competencies and offering a new way for using local languages inviting teachers and students to connect to any place with their lesson plans it is also to share that we have school promoters principals academic coordinators and teachers from more than 1000 uh, schools in india participating uh, and of course it's going to be going to uh, this uh, uh, webinar is going to go live in the youtube so it's uh, you know uh, across people across the globe can access uh this session uh i'm extremely happy to introduce the eminent panel of uh, speakers that we have today with us and uh i'm very happy to take name of my very dear friend mr anand sudarshan who is the founder and director of silvent advisor private limited anand has been very closely associated with fiki has been uh, working uh, as a committee member esteemed committee member uh for many years for almost more than a decade i think and has contributed immensely in uh you know developing knowledge papers policy papers vision documents on behalf of fiki uh, along with our committee members he is also the founding member of edge which is an education sector forum in which fiki is also a member it was a think tank and a member of of course i just spoke about the fiki higher education committee uh moving on i have the pleasure of uh, uh, introducing ms ulla uh, maria founder and ceo of thinklink ulla is a pioneer developer of interactive media technology and user generated mixed reality in education inspired by connecting physical environments and objects with digital information about them ulla started her company thinklink as a spin off from a phd program at the university of helsinki finland welcome ulla uh, uh, next i would like to introduce ms louise jones uh, louise is a director uh, education community and partnerships and is an educator and learning technologist louise uh, has an established background of growing communities to share leading practice in digital learning and teaching uh, next i would also like to introduce mr alexi komu director of sales and partnerships uh, alexi is internationally acknowledged award winning technology expert within the education sector he is a he is passionate about how technology can become a natural part of learning and last but not the least uh, well, uh, i have the pleasure of uh, uh, introducing uh, the most important uh, you know peg in the entire chain and that's a teacher miss lori uh, Sa salom uh, she is a teacher in austin independent school district uh and is a innovative educator from uh austin texas uh who uses thinklink to create a culture of connection in her school by designing visually engagement content for her school community and as you can see that uh, uh, this is a, absolutely a global uh, forum where we we uh, anand and i Uh, are from india louis is sitting in scotland uh, lori is sitting pro probably at texas austin and the rest are from finland so with this 
may I now request uh, Mr. Anand Sudarshan to give the India perspective. Over to you, Anand. Thank you, Shobha. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be on this show and it's a pleasure to be with all the colleagues from Thinglink, which is a, an amazing and very innovative company. And I, it's, it's, um, I'm, it's an honor for me to have been called to share my thoughts here with, uh, with all of you. Um, to say that the last two to three months' time has been momentous is, uh, is really uttering an understatement. Uh, in many ways, it's been momentous. Obviously, our lives have been thrown into a turmoil. The, the human cost, uh, the economic cost leading to further human cost and the tragedies thereof have been uh, uh, really profound and really sad. Uh, I know that uh, you know everybody is working towards both overcoming them. But I tend to look at the, the uh, shades of... Uh, light and silver and all these clouds that are out there and the silver lining to this is the fact that uh, in the area that uh, we are all collectively involved in there has been um, there has been a profound change as well and this time potentially for the positive now it's not as if technologies have not been there before in education sector ed tech technologies have been around for a while i believe what the what covid 19 situation has done i'm speaking especially about india but the same thing could be applicable in many parts of the world what covid 19 situation has done is has accelerated the adoption of technologies at least in the minds of people some to some extent in the in practice as well uh, in as far as education is concerned so it's not that covid made people discover technology but it certainly made adoption of technology Incredible, incredibly fast. It's much, much more, much faster than what it was before. Uh, different parts of the education spectrum compared to early education, K through 12 education, high school, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, higher education part of it in universities, as well as career education or in corporate learning, they've all been affected in different ways. But suffice to say, there isn't a single part of it that has not been affected and not been accelerated, right? And amidst all of this, there is one that to my mind stands out. One of the strands that stands out is the use of immersive learning. Now, the use of technology in learning has often been limited to transferring text from paper to text that you can see on screen. And then the, there is some more intelligence that's got introduced to that by manipulating the text and bringing elements of screen and so on and so forth. What's not been really looked at in at depth uh, is the aspects relating not to the transmission of information, which is predominantly what text does, not just to textual communication, but something much more profound than that, which is experiential part of learning. Now, what immersive learning does, the use of XR, the use of uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, what it does is to bring the aspects of experiential learning to the learning construct per se. Now that this is a this opens up an entirely new set of opportunities for educators, but more importantly, opens up an entirely set of new opportunities for the learner. Now we must understand the learner of today, particularly in school, is a digital native. Their ability to instinctively adapt and adopt technologies to the perspective of the way in which they are learning is very different from what it was for people of my generation, perhaps even the generation after mine. Today, these digital natives absorb technology like a sponge, and they have the way to distribute that technology and the impact of it and essentially integrate that into the DNA of their learning. Immersive learning allows them the opportunity, not just to, you know, in these days of social distancing and all other limitation, not just to enjoy experiential learning, but also in a land like India with multiple languages, give an opportunity for engagement to happen to, between people in teams, collaboration to happen between people whose languages, their mother tongues may be quite different. And over a period of time, this kind of a collaboration and the learning that it brings in, the cultural strands that it leaves will lead to a much more, much richer, range of learning than before. 
to me when i went through thinglink and i was trying to understand what thinglink does what stood out the most is this in a country like india you know where the need for us to reach every nook and corner of india every single citizen is extremely high the need for us to make sure that education isn't only about the book but it's also about the practice with the need for us to understand the cultural nuances the language nuances exists the need for us to ensure that people get educated in a manner that befits the requirement of the prospective employer that they will be finally getting employed in the need for us even in the case of a corporate setup to be able to train people to educate people across the length and breadth of india which is the size of a continent what struck me in all these scenarios immersive learning especially immersive learning that is practically oriented and is fitting with the uh, with the technological landscape the infrastructure of india it will be something that will be uh, that will make uh, you know enormous amount of difference there are many examples you know i was just looking through the practical examples of uh, uh, of where where these things have been you know employed the the teaching side of it we have a teacher who's going to be sharing their experiences we are the folks from thinglink but imagine for us and each and every one of us can imagine we are all people i presume from the education sector are connected with it imagine for us for our children for our schools for our educators if you are able to give a tool that can at once increase the intensity and the effectiveness of learning can bring in collaboration and experiential learning to the fore and can actually propel learning to the next level would that not be interesting here is an opportunity to potentially do so now it actually happens basis is based on the implementation but here is an a potential opportunity to do so i'm i'm truly looking forward to uh, listening to ula later and learning about it this is a great opportunity thank you very much shobha for inviting me to share my few thoughts and i look forward to listening to the program i wish all of you the very best thank you anand as as always you've been absolutely crystal clear and you have set the context so rightly uh, you know for the next speaker to be invited in uh, while you've given a you know a real uh, context to the what is the scenario in india and how uh, you know ar vr xr uh, can help in bringing in collaborative and experiential learning for a indian student uh, uh, you know from diverse background uh, we will move on to the global perspective uh, that will be uh, you know uh, spoken about by uh, ms ula and ms louise so i will hand over to louise now for taking the uh, uh, the next uh, speaker oh please go ahead thank you very much for thank you very much for that wonderful introduction we we are just so delighted to be here and we're delighted to meet you all so thank you very much so on this wonderful webinar which we have with you which will be finishing about 5 o'clock this evening i'm delighted to share that we have a a, a packed agenda for you um i'm delighted again to introduce to you ula maria koivala Ula is a CEO and founder of Thinglink and Ula is going to talk to us about some of the rich history of Thinglink which is now 10 years old it's a mature red tech tool and it's been quite a journey to get here we're also going to be looking at some use cases um some of the passionate educators we've seen globally that are using thinglink in different ways not only are they our favorites but they're also inspiring educators across the globe and in order for you to hear directly from one of our inspiring educators we've brought along we've invited miss lori salomi from austin independent school in texas and you're going to absolutely love some of her examples We're just going to have a little look at how you can use ThingLink in your school and how you can get going with it, and we're going to finish with a Q and A. So it's now my great pleasure to remove myself and hand over to Ula. Thank you very much for listening. Again, thank you for inviting us to this webinar. I very much enjoyed Mr. 
and our introduction maybe a lot of important points that I also wanted to bring up in the in the brief introduction about the background of the moment because because uh, there there are a lot of connections to bigger discussions about how new technology can help solve some of the biggest problems in, in global education today. And um, I just wanted to start by um kind of summarizing some of the uh, challenges that every teacher every day faces uh uh with today. And um and then and, and then we uh we were talking about how how new technology can maybe solve some of these problems and challenges. So one of the one of the challenges already before the COVID nineteen situation was that a lot of students have very limited access to real world learning environments. And um and this can be because schools are maybe not accessible, uh students are closed, now they're closed for summer break. There is always limited resources for field trips and parents have limited resources to um also help students with the with the cases. So uh and, and what does what this does is uh millions of students have uh, less less and less opportunities to uh to develop contextual understanding of what they're learning about and this can you speak a little bit closer to the microphone? People are having a little trouble hearing you, so it's just okay. a little bit muffled. So if you can make sure that you are close to the microphone, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, Ilo, can you change to a laptop mic? We can't really hear you very well. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, we can, that's super clear. Okay. Okay, good. Um, can you change the slide, Louise? Search. Okay. So in addition to having limited access to real world environments, uh, increasingly, uh, classrooms are more diverse and students come from different language backgrounds and also an increasing number of students today have a different kind of accessibility requirements. So this makes it very difficult in the current situation for teachers to support these students. And then on the third challenge, uh, Louise, if you change the slide, is that, um, that there is always a lack of qualified teachers, which has obviously negative impact on student engagement and performance. So um, you can move on to the next slide. So when uh, when I started Thinglink about 10 years ago, I was very inspired by the idea that visual media will play a key role in the future of learning. And this is because uh, most of the, the digital environment and the digital learning environments that we spend time consists of images and videos. You can move on to the next slide. And so we started building, uh, and I started uh, I was inspired by the idea. I was thinking, how can we make it make every image or every video pos potential learning experience so that uh, it would be easy to just whenever you see an image, it would be easy to touch the things you're interested in and find out more information about it. So this was really like the starting point of ThingLink. And we can move on to the next slide, Louise. Uh, and we wanted to make the this technology so easy um and 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 worldwide like generally applicable to anything so that anybody could just uh very easily add all different kinds of media to images and videos so uh whether it's teachers or students um if they have an uh, image of a, of a topic they're teaching about they can easily add text notes they can easily record their voice to the images. They can record instructions to students. Uh, they can add close-up images. They can add videos. Um, they can add questions to students to think about. So this way we would create, um, uh, with teachers, we would create a, a global learning environment in the cloud. And Louise, you can move on to the, the next slide. So typically, ThingLink has two different kind of use cases in school. And one is exactly this um, where teachers use ThingLink to quickly create visual online learning materials. And they can do that using their own language. So whether they can just 
um, record instructions by clicking a button, they can record their voice and that voice is saved in the image. And when student is viewing that image, they can hear their teacher talking. Or the second use case is students can document their work using the tool. Uh, and this way they get to practice different forms of media and the diff different 21st century skills. And uh, the, I wanted to bring up especially the language uh, aspect because it is, it is such a big challenge in, 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 in all schools currently. As I said, st student groups are more diverse. So one of the um, uh, big, big improvements that we did recently as per teacher's request was we integrated with um, Microsoft's Immersive Reader, which helps translate all these learning materials to um, to different languages. So it's a built-in uh, trans uh, reading tool that lets the student choose a different language, which also me opens up a lot of new possibilities for teacher collaboration and global collaboration. Luis, you can change the slide. So I'm kind of just summing up the. Um, the, the 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 examples and challenges here by saying that um, uh, why there's there's been a lot of hype about virtual reality for some years and and but I wanted to remind that um, that virtual reality or different kind of visual learning tools uh, they can relate to big questions and those two big questions and topics are accessibility and and, and quality of education and it doesn't mean that everybody needs a virtual reality headset uh, it can happen with the devices that students and teachers already have it can happen with with their smartphones or laptops or um, uh, or desktop computers of course like that's still an infrastructural challenge in 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 every country that how can student access uh, any kind of device so that they could access online learning but still um, uh, those are the two big challenges how technologies like ThingLink can help. And the, the ac about the accessibility point, what, what we are trying to think every day um, is how, how can we make the creation of immersive tools so easy that every teacher can create these experience for their students, that we can actually make the world accessible virtually when students have to stay at home. And this allows them to form and develop the uh, better understanding of, of the topic. And the second is uh, the, the point about quality that I wanted to mention is, is, is the, the use of multimedia. So, what, so this is based on the, the idea that when student is able to uh, hear, see, look, look at an image and listen uh, to an explanation and maybe read that at the same time, they uh, receive information through multiple channels. So it's a more effi efficient learning experience rather than just reading. And this also uh, uh, ob obviously relates to a bigger topic of, of including students who might have um, reading disabilities. Uh, and so it leads to a better inclusion of various kinds of students. And uh, uh, I also wanted to mention that we've been really happy to work on this towards these bigger goals and bigger topics with our um, technology partners. We are both a partner with uh, Microsoft and, and Google for Education and, and also very much look forward uh, now to this new partnership with, with Fiki and, and working with all of you. So I definitely encourage uh, encourage you to contact if you have any questions and uh, tell about projects that you'd be interested in starting, we're happy to help. Thank you, Louise. Oh, thank you, Ulla. That was just such a great introduction to ThingLink. I've actually been part of ThingLink since November, and I honestly don't think I could have joined a better team and a better product. The wonderful thing that Ulla has just outlined is that ThingLink 
yes, is a Microsoft Gold partner and it also works with Google. But from my experience, everybody loves ThingLink because it plays nicely with everything, as well as having the integration with Immersive Reader. We are also a Teams app so that you can add ThingLink as a Teams app into your channels and your streams. And likewise, we play nicely with Google Classroom and you can integrate within some of the Google tools. And of course, both Microsoft and Google apps themselves, you can embed within a thing link. So it is EdTech Harmony in practice. My role is really about growing the education communities and working with educators such as yourselves in India and working in countries to really help you understand some of the ways in which you can use it. And as you heard right from the very start of this webinar, times have really changed and we've seen ThingLink rise to the challenge and educators use their creativity skills to use ThingLink in different ways. And I've got some lovely examples that I just wanted to share with you before I pass to one of our favorite educators, Laurie in Texas. So this example that I'm sharing with you now um, is where a teacher who works with little learners, she works with the ones who are just starting out in school. And of course, they weren't able to come into school because the school, although it was closed the building, it wasn't closed for learning. And I think that's a really important point that educators like you have carried on learning, even though the school buildings might be shut. So one of the things that this teacher found was that parents were really struggling because they found that teachers were setting lots and lots of different tasks. And it was quite difficult and overwhelming to understand what tasks to give to the little learners um, that didn't overwhelm them. So parents were feeling overwhelmed. The pupils were feeling overwhelmed, but this teacher came up with a solution. So she was able to put together a thing link, which was a base image. So with ThingLink, you can upload an image, you can upload a 360 degree image, you can upload a video and you can upload a 360 degree video. And then you can add in all of your lovely tags. And these can be text and media tags or they can be other things like embedded apps. But what this teacher did is that she put a visual representation of her classroom and then put in those little icons, which are all tags that have little assignments for the pupils. And when those tags open up, they contain even more images and more um, text. So suddenly this became really fun for the learners. Students and parents felt more comfortable about this blended learning approach because it had all of the resources organized in one place, which was just lovely. Um, and I'll be sharing these on Twitter, these live links, so you'll be able to interact with the thing links as well and see them. So the outcome of this was that learning was made simple and engaging for the little learners. My next example is really thinking about how you can overcome challenges. When pupils are stuck at home, or even if they can't physically get to places, places that sometimes might be on their doorstep that they don't go and visit. I'm really lucky, I live in the mountains, but some of the children that live in our communities don't get to venture up the mountains. They don't get to visit places unless they have parental support to do so. But this place, which is Vermont, which is in America, it's the state of Vermont, they wanted to make sure their students still had that cultural understanding and understood the cultural history of their environment and their state. So they worked together with all the museums and they created that map of Vermont at the top. And each of those little museum icons is where you can click and go into a virtual tour of that museum. And all it took was a few 360 degree images that were woven together through ThingLink. And some of the museum curators didn't have 360 degree images. So they just used Google Street View on their phone. And then they made these wonderful, rich virtual tours. 
and they also put in other information. So it helped the museums and also helped the learners to engage with their cultural heritage, something which I'm un I understand is really important wherever you live, but especially to you. So the next example that I wanted to show that was really inspiring for us, and that is when um, workplaces Places that students can't visit become um, accessible to them. Now, how often do you get the chance to actually go into a lab and see all the information and see all those machineries and to have that information presented? So this particular example is where a university has worked to create these labs. But imagine this could be anywhere. It could be a building site. It could be um, any kind of workshop or shop where you can enable learners to visit and really explore. And all it takes is a partnership with that organization. So you're already starting to build business communities and partnerships um, to help your students find more examples. And this example is when you can really start to bring it all together. So this is a, we have councils, they're local authorities, they're like districts. And they've created an image, which is just one image. And then they've grouped their schools on the picture um, by just putting the list. And then if you click on the arrow, it will take you to another map of that location with all the schools highlighted. And then you can go into each of those schools and they are providing virtual tours to those schools because those students who would be going to that school can't physically get there. So they wanted to create 360 degree tours of those schools so that it didn't matter that they couldn't go into school and see their new school, they could still go in and see and tour the school. So they created a way for students to feel comfortable about making that transition when they go and and this again is a fantastic example we'll be sharing with you but it builds in it scaffolds that support in and if you go into those tours even the teachers have got little clips that say welcome to my classroom you know i can't wait to meet you and that is just such a welcoming thing for both parents and for the students so I think it'd be a really nice opportunity for me now um, because you um, have heard a lot from me. I've got one more example to show you, but I'm just going to bring Laurie onto the screen because in a second I'm going to show um, Laurie's going to show you some of her examples, but I've got one left. I've been teasing everyone with my school transition videos, and this is my absolute favorite. So this is Pennybont Primary School, which is a school in Wales, and they were really struggling about this transition. But what they wanted to do was they wanted to make sure that learners still felt connected to the places, the spaces that they know and love. So they created the 360 tour with the pop-up of the teachers telling them what their assignments were going to be that week. And that was just a fantastic way of keeping connected with learners, but also making sure that they don't feel uncomfortable about coming back into school as well. So it is without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce Laurie Salome, one of our favorite educators from Texas, who's going to be talking about how she did this in practice. So over to you, Laurie. Can we hear you okay? Oh, you're on mute. We're just on mute. There you go. <laughs> okay, over to you. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> I did make myself a little cheat sheet so that I would be concise because I really could talk about this for a very long time. So, Louise, don't feel bad interrupting me if you need to <laughs> to say either cut it off or uh, guide me if I steer away too far. Uh, my name's Lori. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Austin, Texas. I teach math. Um, those are 10 and 11 year olds. And I have 180 students um, because I co-teach with um, the other teaching trio. So um, in short, how I got to be here, which I'm excited to be here with you guys today, um, I had sent a little love note to the ThingLink customer service. I've been using ThingLink for a very long time, I may, maybe since close to the beginning, now that Ula mentioned that it's about 10 years old, and I've just loved it. Um, 
but I had written a, a note to customer service to basically let them know that they had saved me for this transition to online learning. Um, we, I have a, degree, a master's degree in instructional design, so I'm really comfortable with technology and integration and everything else, but I was not prepared um, emotionally, <laughs> physically, any of it for the quarantine. So um, what had happened was on a Thursday night at 3.30 in the morning, the district sent phone calls out to everyone saying, please don't come to school tomorrow. And that was the last day that we have been in the building. And so it was a jarring transition for everybody, um, students and teachers alike. And even though I felt really comfortable with a variety of tools, I needed something that I could pull together a lot of information in a really quick um, time turnaround to get parents and families kind of some feeling some sense of normal <laughs> um, amidst all of the trauma from the transition. And ThingLink was just the most perfect tool for that. So what you're looking at are um, is just one of the choice boards that we put up through our LMS. So what I needed was I needed a place where I could get all of the resources put together in a landing place that would not be m moving around or changing or tons of email texting or anything that would look overwhelming for parents, but that would provide like a consistent and organized way in which to deliver new content every week. And so each week we um, would upload a thing link background image that looks just like the one you're looking at here. It would change every week and the background would stay the same. So there would be certain sections that remained consistent. But what you can't see is that underneath each of those little icons, we had a lot of personal um, tidbits. So. For example, all of the directions was my voice talking to the kids directly, which I know that parents commented a lot what a difference it made to actually hear and see us instead of just getting a bunch of text directions. And then we could also cater the information for the kids um, to offer a variety of resources for a very widespread of needs. So you can see at the bottom of the image, there are different colored you can kind of see blue and red circles with pencils in them. That would indicate this is a written worksheet, <clears throat> like a standard worksheet. And the red ones were challenge level and the blue ones were regular level. And then we use the hotspots also to demonstrate to um, as almost like a symbology system to alert parents and kids what was hiding behind each of those hotspots. So um, there are little video game icons and that would indicate that it was leading them to an online game platform. So we are able to use all of the other ed tech resources that we know and love in kind of blend them together into one image that is not visually or informationally overwhelming. Um, and so some of the things that I felt like would be most important to share with you would be that as a person who's really comfortable with technology, I I don't mind jumping right in, but I was working with a whole fleet of teachers who had never really dabbled in technology and were suddenly responsible to put something together, um, their whole curriculum online with such a little turnaround and amidst such personal stress that um, teachers were really overwhelmed to say the least. And I had offered some little mini trainings to teachers on different tech tools. And it was then that I realized how useful the thing link was because I was hearing back from teachers that had taken the training within 30 minutes, an hour of just having been shown a quick introduction of the thing link. And they were already creating these fantastic interactive, visually rich, multimedia rich um, platforms that also would kind of allow the students to reach out to the same resources that they had already been doing, hear from the same human beings that they had been interacting with. And it also allowed us to put some of those emotional pieces in place. So in the hello section, every week we would give the kids a little video, we would show them around our house, we would show them our pets. We had a flip grid activity up in that hello section where we would challenge the kids to a lip sync battle and silly things like that. But 
in truth, that was what some of the kids needed the most. And then on the bottom right, we linked to a Google form, which was a check-in and a link um, to the counselor if they needed to touch base with the school counselor or if they wanted just to touch base with us. So we would have kids filling that those out all the time, um, many times a day. And that was just a really cool way to stay connected. And I think I I just marvel at how much information, how many different platforms, how much, how many directions, and how many different places this one little image took everybody. And since we could embed it within our LMS, it just lived in the place where the kids were used to going. And then as a new week would unleash, we would just pop the new image up. And so the parents had access to the entire library as time progressed. So if parents were behind or parents were ahead, um, they had something that would meet their needs. And again, if you had a child that had a learning difference and needed something that was scaled back, we could offer that um, through the hotspots. And if you had a child that was gifted and needed more rigor, we could offer that. Um, and then since we were using a lot of online platforms, there was a lot of accountability. So we were able to actually see what the kids were doing, give them feedback for the things they were doing, give them shout outs for the things that they were doing online. And that accountability piece from what we heard from parents really helped in motivate kids to get online because they knew it was going to be like a personal relationship feeling experience rather than like was mentioned at the beginning, just a substitution of like transferring a workbook online. Um, so those hotspots allow you to put a lot of different multimedia behind them, which makes it really di flexible. And then the other um, thing that ended up being fantastic that was made with ThingLink, um, I made, so through that Google form, a lot of the kids were expressing a lot of trauma about having the, in, in, in America, at the end of fifth grade, you move on to middle school. So secondary school happens. So many, many of our 180 fifth graders, when they would fill out that little check-in through Google form would say, I'm so sad, I'm never gonna come to school again. Or all my stuff is still at school. Or I'm never gonna see X, Y, and Z again, things that were at school. It was very clear that since they were graduating from fifth grade, one of their biggest challenges was kind of that emotional closure piece. So I wanted to make an experience for the kids that would kind of help get them back in the building, even though we couldn't be back in the building. And I created a little scavenger hunt that played. I began it in Google Forms and it kind of set the stage that it was a dream and that they, they were falling asleep. And when they wake up, they're at school. So when they wake up, they would click the button, it would take them to a thing link. And then this thing link is that you're seeing is just one image from my actual school. Um, and once the students got to school, they would travel around using the hotspots um, to interact with staff members that had created really sweet little videos for the kids, um, kind of helping them along in this quest to find these hidden math problems that were hiding all around the land. So it's like a nonlinear, um, almost like a video game experience that I was able to create, um, even though I have no building experience in that regard. And it was just really awesome. I heard from a lot of families that their kids were on that scavenger hunt, like that they couldn't tear their child away from the scavenger hunt. And I just really appreciated that 3D put you in an immersive place, someplace that means something to you. Um, and it's just been awesome. Oh, Laurie, that was just brilliant. It was so great to hear your examples. And, and you'll stay with us and be on the Q&A panel yeah. as well, won't you? Yeah. Thanks ever so much. So I've got a few minutes left. So I'm just going to remove you from the stream. And I'm picking up some of the things that have been happening in the chat as well. Some people were asking for a demonstration. We have a wonderful how to create a thing link from scratch video on our YouTube channel. It's very, very quick and it's super easy. So anyone that wants to do that afterwards, I would suggest you hop over and have a look at some of those examples. Um, so just summing up really, one of the other challenges we haven't mentioned is how students can practice these 21st century skills, these digital skills in using different types of media, whether that's images and their voice, 
using video. And this was an example where children at home, and this is lower secondary school, they were being asked to create a project around a famous person and a biography. And this student at Crosswaite Primary School stunned their teachers when they self-taught themselves how to use ThingLink, created that base image of David Attenborough, and then they've put in all these little hotspots that just pop to life and uh, they've got further images and audio in. So not only were they demonstrating their knowledge and their love of their subject, they were demonstrating their skills in using 21st century essential audio, media, multimedia skills, everything that Ula talked about earlier. So another challenge is um, very relevant for you as well as us, which is how do we demonstrate um, results? How do we really capture data? And you'll be very pleased to know that all thing links have statistics built into them so you can see how well it's been used, which tags have been clicked on, those kinds of things. And also we're introducing a question tag so that you can capture data for mandatory training directly in that thing link. And just recently I've heard of a, a really good use case where people have to answer questions in the thing link to make sure that they've done the health and safety training, for example. And then that's even linked to their key to get in the building. So they have to complete the training on the thing link to make sure their key works against the building. It's just fantastic. Um, now, this is really exciting. We only launched this last week. I talked about our partnership with Microsoft, but part of our partnership with Microsoft is that we can put courses on the Microsoft Education Center, and you can do this absolutely free, um, and you get your badge, your digital badge, which you can add to your profile and gain your 500 points. There's eight modules, and each module has a video, and then it also has a quiz at the end. And if you fill out your form, when they arrive, we're waiting for delivery, you'll even um, receive a thing like lanyard and a wooden medal when they arrive. We're hoping to get them shipped out, but obviously everything's a bit delayed at the moment. So as you heard, my role is about community and we have some community groups for you. We have a ThingLink India group that was set up, but we haven't really used it. It's a private group, but you can join that. And then we really want to make sure that we're looking at everything in your language, in your culture, examples that are sharing. So please do join up to that. We also have our ThingLink education group, which is a much bigger group on Facebook. And you can connect with educators, share ideas, be inspired. And don't forget to follow us on ThingLink thinglink underscore edu and you'll be able to join in the conversations there so last but no means least for thinglink is free you can sign up to thinglink.com forward slash edu create an account but that means that you're a teacher um, and you're working pretty much on your own but what we do see as a model of best practice is when a district or a school creates a thinglink account and uh, each teacher then has an account within the organization and all the students are part of that organization and then you've got collaboration built in so you can collaborate with other teachers with other students on thing links as well so i think that's me i'm coming to the end of my presentation so i'm just going to remove myself and i'm going to add in everyone that you've been speaking to already um, so that we can then answer some questions so thank you to listening to myself and thank you to laurie but over to shobra and the team to answer your questions over to you. Okay. So, Shopa, you're yeah, alive. So Louise, you, <laughs> yeah. I am alive. And uh, what am I expected to do? So now we have a little bit of a summing up and we're just going to see if we've got any Q&A that's coming in that we wanted to pick up from some of the um, comments. Um, and yeah, so one of the questions that's just come up is about using Teams and other products. So um, um, we've got a wonderful video on how you can use ThingLink within Microsoft Teams, um, which is just super easy. Um, Ula, did you want to come in and answer that one as well?
just checking that the microphone is working. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, you can definitely sign up to ThingLink via Teams. Uh, the whole ThingLink service is wrapped in the ThingLink Teams app. So you can both create the content, create interactive images or posters or virtual tours inside Teams, and then you can share them easily to the Teams channels. And also, uh, if you have a larger district or larger school and you're an Azure user, uh, we also allow our big customers to connect their own Azure account to ThingLink so that whenever students upload or teachers upload images, they all go to your Azure storage and not ours. We've got some lovely comments coming in and big thank you to all of the speakers. Lots of really nice um, questions that are coming in. Is there anything else? There was one about um, native language as well, about Punjabi language needs to be in our technological guidance. We can take that on board, can't we, Ula? We can see if that's something we can develop some other videos in. But certainly I know the immersive reader um, does have Punjabi built into it. Is that right, Ula? So we listed the four four languages earlier. What uh, are supported now? I know that they're working on adding adding new uh, languages all the time. I think that is supported now. And um, what I wanted to mention is that if anybody listening to this webinar is already a ThingLink user or is becoming a ThingLink user, we would really love to develop our uh, community in India, educator community in India. We have a very very active community. Community. And Louis Brawley, you're going to mention that later on. But uh, please free, feel, to re feel free to reach out uh, if you're interested in showing some of your work already to others. Uh, we'd love to stay in touch. Uh, yes. So just um, someone was asking how we could join ThingLink India. So if you go to Facebook um, and search for ThingLink India, you're about to join the group. It is a private group. So we want to keep it private so that it does remain part of your um community so if you request then Ula and I and admins but also don't forget we're always looking for people to join our community and take leadership roles so if you think that it might be a good opportunity for you to take a thing like leadership role just like Laurie did mm -hmm. um, with us uh, we'd be delighted to work with anybody and that's also a really nice way of sharing local examples as well um, so, yeah, are there any other questions? Just sort of see if there's anything else that we want to pull up. Um, lots of questions about whether it can be used with any particular subject. Of course, ThingLink can be used with any subject. I can't think of a subject where you wouldn't use it. Would you agree, Laurie? No, I can't think. And I noticed that somebody in the chat asked, what apps can you connect a ThingLink to? And really, anything that you can generate a URL or embed code you can embed into your ThingLink. And so that has been an awesome tool to integrate a lot of other tools in one place. Um, absolutely. And there was another question there about using it with science experiments. That's a great idea. So imagine if you had a, an image of your science classroom, your lab, and you could take a little video of an experiment and put that in a tag as well. And that would that would be able to be shared. So no. So we're just coming up to the end of our session. Um, we did mention our communities. There's ThingLink India. Uh, ThingLink Education on Facebook as well. So do have a look at those. On Twitter, we are ThingLink underscore edu. And I'm just going to invite uh, Shopper back in just to round off this wonderful session. So I don't know whether you want to have any closing remarks. So thank you, Louise. Uh, I'm sorry, I kept on dropping uh, on and off from the uh, you know, the stream yard. Uh, so I think this was a wonderful uh, session. I think you gave a, a, a complete overview of what thinking is all about and how VR and uh, AR and XR can be used in, you know, making the experiences of uh, the learner through online uh, uh, education more, uh, uh, you know, enriching uh, and uh, useful. And it's a it's going to be a pleasure both for the teacher as well as the learner because I think I can see the passion that uh, uh, you know Ula has in uh, uh, coming up with this wonderful company of hers and of course her colleagues Louise and uh, Laurie who are taking the her vision forward by actually implementing uh, it and I'm sure uh, India has. Uh, 
whole lot of passionate uh, teachers who are uh, already uh, you know delivering digital uh, uh, you know education through their uh, online mode and they will be more than happy to experience and i'm sure your india thinkling group is going to be buzzing with uh, lots of uh, leaders you know uh, and india is a big country diverse country and what i found was most impressive was uh india has a challenge of you know content in different local languages and yeah. if uh, your uh, you know technology can convert that content into uh, you know various regional languages it's going to be very very useful and several state government uh, governments would be very very keen on you know uh, taking on uh, thingling on to their fold so with this i think uh, thank you all and as you can see it's a women's world you know i was just looking at <laughs> at one of the what whatsapp forwards which says that all those country which has a women leader managing covid including our own state of kerala where we have a woman health minister they have it i mean kind of control covid pandemic pretty much well uh, and and i'm sure with this women power we we are going to make uh, you know world a better place for everybody and particularly for our children to look forward to thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank bye you. everybody bye 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 thank you